welcome everyone to the jump start your mobile automation begin your journey with apm and web driver by shri harsha we are glad shri harsha can join us today for this session thank you ankit hi everyone thank you for joining how to the session jump start your apm journey with web driver i hope so for the people who don't know me uh, my name is sri harsha i'm working as engineering manager for the open source program office at lambda test i'm also the committer and member of selenium hq and a part of the tlc and also a web driver driver committer okay so um coming to the agenda uh first we will introduce uh, like you know with the apm and web driver io i'm setting the foundation on how these two uh, tools will complement each other and next we'll explore the partnership between these two and uh, later maximizing web driver io's capabilities uh, we can see uh, capabilities with apm to provide seamless mobile and web integration and uh, after that uh, we will actually set up and uh, how to get started with this both tools followed by an exciting walk through and um, Finally, uh, we will be unleashing the power of WebDriver IO9. So recently, WebDriver IO9 has been released, and we will discuss running tests efficiently in cloud services after the like you know, after discussing the features of WebDriver IO9. So, um, coming to the first thing, why we need uh, like you know, what is APM? So, uh, APM is a versatile open source mobile automation tool. So a lot of people already knows that. So actually, it enables automated testing in native, hybrid, and mobile apps. Okay, so it is also a cross-platform uh, tool that also like you know that uh, that allows us to execute hybrid uh, mobile and web apps, right? So uh, one of the APM's key strength is uh, like you know um, it is flexible uh, like you know in in programming languages you can you can write APM test cases in any programming languages like JavaScript, Python, and Java, right? And uh, the main standard thing of the APM is it is a, it uses the standard web driver protocol. So it, it so that like you know your automation scripts will be the same in all the environments and all the like you know in on all the uh, browsers in all the devices. I can say clearly, regardless of whatever regardless of whatever the system you are using. So um, coming to the web driver IO, web driver IO is a powerful and extensible Node.js framework written in JavaScript and also in the TypeScript. So uh, it actually simplifies cross browser, uh, like, you know, cross test, uh, writing tests in cross browser environment and also writing tests uh, for the APM devices, like, you know, mobile devices with the APM. And the main point with the WebDriver IO is it actually supports modern protocols, that is WebDriver, WPC protocol, and also CDP protocol. And uh, in addition, in WebDriver IO 9, uh, web, it, you know, WebDriver IO also supports the WebDriver by die protocol. So, and also the main standpoint with the WebDriver IO is it supports a lot of plugins and services actually, uh, so that you you can have the detailed reporting and like you, know, you can also have the TypeScript support. So, using WebDriver IO, it is a great for scaling and managing large test suits. Whether you have small test suits or whether you have thousands of test suits, so using WebDriver IO and these test runners and these capabilities, now uh, it will help you to scale and manage large test suits. So, um. Why to use them together? Uh, why APM with WebDriver IO? Assume you have a scenario where you want to actually maintain a test suite uh, which executes uh, in browser and which also executes in the mobile environment. So in that case, I can use WebDriver IO with a combination of APM, right? So uh, so that what happens is you will have the unified testing environment for web and mobile apps. So it's a single framework, uh, like you know, one, one framework uh, with all the automation capabilities in the APM mind web. And also APM uh, web driver enhances APM's functionality. For example, um, you you like know what the operations you can do in APM. Uh, also, like you know, web driver has few services and plugins that uh, APM can use uh, for the detailed reporting or uh, executing tests in cloud or executing tests in parallel or executing the tests in CI. And APM can also leverage web driver's test runners to uh, write and uh, like you know, write the test test cases in the descriptive way. So this is how uh, APM actually uses WebDriver IO in the backend too. So, um, and also web drive, uh, when you use APM with WebDriver IO, WebDriver IO provides a seamless integration for the APM. That means we WebDriver IO uses a single APM service so that uh, it actually uses the like, you know, seamless integration for the mobile communication via WebDriver. 
And um, it also simplifies parallel test execution, reporting, and test management. So as I said, uh, APM can use the WebDriver driver services for uh, like you know, plugins and services so that you can execute your APM test cases in parallel. And you can use the same you can use the same web driver driver reporters for the APM from APM test cases. And also you can use the web driver driver test runners for the test management. So how APM works with WebDriver Ivo in the backend. So WebDriver Ivo has done, uh, like you know, WebDriver Ivo has is is has done easily with the use of APM service plugin. So it is integrated in WebDriver Ivo uh, types. So uh, you all you need is the installation of the APM service plugin via npm command. So you know WebDriver Ivo is a JavaScript tool uh, that runs on the like you know top of Node.js. So Node.js has to be installed, and when you install Node.js, you get the npm commands directly. So uh, you have to install the APM service in order to use uh, like an APM in WebDriver Ivo. And once you install the service, and you have to like you know integrate in the configuration file, or you have to provide the information in the configuration file, what services you are uh, like you know using to communicate with that service. For example, here we are using APM service, uh, and we are running tests through WebDriver Ivo, so that WebDriver Ivo actually connects to the APM service and sends instructions to your devices or like you know uh, browsers in the devices. So the simple thing, you have to just provide port and services in the WebDriver Ivo configuration. So this is how a seamless integration is done. And this is how WebDriver Ivo easily works with the APM service in the backend. So what are the key benefits of doing this is, uh, APM service in WebDriver Ivo uh, is uh, auto manages your a APM, like an APM server. So you don't need to actually uh, manually uh, start and stop the server. So WebDriver Ivo auto manages the server. So whenever the test is starting, it actually makes the APM server up. And whenever the test is uh, like you know um, ended, uh, it stops the server. So that uh, for each test, you'll be having a clean server and, uh, and this clean session management. And second thing is that it actually improves the test flow. So uh, as I said, APM can use the WebDriver Ivo test runner so that APM server is automatically, uh, APM server is ready for smooth and reliable execution. And um, this this is the first thing, uh, how APM works with WebDriver Ivo using the services and how it also leverages WebDriver Ivo is using the capability management. So for the people who are, who has already worked with uh, WebDriver Ivo, you can see the configuration thing, like it, it provides a detailed capabilities and you can also manage capabilities in one single configuration file. So by changing the capabilities or by changing the platforms or by changing the device names, you can uh, easily change the configuration of your test, uh, like in targeted devices. You can also have the parallel configuration, uh, the required configuration for native or hybrid or like, you know, uh, uh, inbuilt app. So again, the key benefits is uh, straightforward. So using uh, use different capabilities for iOS and Android. So using the single capabilities file, uh, you can actually change the device name and platform version and few other details like automation name so that your test will directly execute uh, in the device or like in the cloud uh, device. And uh, mostly important I want to highlight here is the device name and the platform version are more, more like, you know, uh, important parameters or capabilities I can say to target your uh, specific devices. So, um, what WebDriver Ivo offering with APM? So we have already discussed, but we'll go in detail. So it's a cross platform testing. So um, WebDriver Ivo actually uh, allows you to develop test cases and test cases in all the environments, irrespective of like, you know, uh, in iOS, in Android, and in also in the Windows. So APM can use the same WebDriver Ivo uh, offering uh, in the backend. So your APM test will be like, you know, more uh, supported in all the environments. So cross platform testing is made easy. And second thing is the parallel execution. Uh, in WebDriver Ivo configuration, we can have the max instances as many as possible and the configurations as parallel configurations so that you can now execute your APM test cases uh, in parallel in the WebDriver Ivo. And custom commands and mobile specific in, uh, interactions. So here, um, the APM with WebDriver Ivo has like, you know, uh, custom commands. Uh, you can also write custom locators for the APM thing. And also WebDriver Ivo has few inbuilt uh, mobile specific interactions like touch-based or scroll-based actions that are inbuilt, uh, uh, written in the WebDriver Ivo. You can use them uh, for, the, uh, for the native app testing. And unified reporting and debugging. So what are the report you want to use? For example, Alu uh, report or spec reporter or dot reporter or whatever the report portal integration, whatever the reporter you want to use, 
all these reporters are available in part in terms of, like you know in the ways of services in web drive so if you want to use one service you can just uh include it in the services thing in the web driver IO and APM can use the same thing for the reporting and also for the debugging. Web driver IO provides a good way to provide uh, like you know uh, record logs and what what the communication is happening between the driver and the device. So these logs can be captured and captured and it will be more helpful for the debugging purpose. And cloud and remote device testing and is the same again. So all the cloud execution like browser stack, Lambda test, and source labs, these, these things are uh, actually available in terms of services in WebDriver IO. So if you want to run your test cases um, in the cloud services, what you need to do is just install the service, configure that service. It takes only like, you know, 10 seconds that, we'll, that we are going to do it in the end of the session. And you can directly run your test cases so that your test will run on the uh, cloud. Okay. So um, I'm... Next thing is the CI/CD integration. We have a lot of plugins for the CI/CD. So if you want to include in the GitHub Actions or like you know uh, Jenkins or whatever the CI/CD you want to integrate, again APM can leverage WebDriver I offering in here, and uh, it can we can directly execute test cases in the CI/CD. And uh, WebDriver I/O also has support for native and hybrid apps, so that you can directly use uh, direct write test cases and execute them. So uh, one of the scenario I have encountered before is um, there was a scenario where I need to execute my test cases in the browser. Uh, part of test case, like you know, uh, forty percent or fifty percent of the test should flow in the browser, and uh, the next of the test case should continue in the mobile mobile browser. So the way I achieved through the web driver IO, where I have used web driver IO first off to run test cases in the Chromium browser. And I have continued in the same session using the same session. I have transferred it to the APM APM thing, and I have also continued the test in the mobile device. So these kind of like you know tricky things that you can achieve with WebDriver IO. Another another scenario was um, while I was testing a conference meeting app like in a Zoom kind of app. So I need to launch the mobile. Uh, I need to, I need to launch the uh, meeting in one device, and I have to attend the meeting in another device. So these kind of things like you know I have. Uh, achieved with the web driver with the ease of use. So the main problem coming to the mobile automation or the, like, you know, uh, with start getting started with the APM with a lot of users is with the complex setup, I can say. But uh, web driver has done, made it so easily with the CLI tools that you can get started within seconds and you can also start executing the test cases in the mobile devices. But before that, uh, we need a few of the prerequisites. So th this entire, uh, Talk is about like you know setting things up fastly and executing test cases in the mobile devices. Uh, like you know, I'm going to execute in the simulators in here. So um, coming to the base thing, as you know, WebDriver IO uh, works on the top of Node.js. We need Node.js binary uh, in the backend, so you can install the Node.js LTS version. So these these are the basic prerequisites that you need to like you know have uh, get it installed in your machine to get started. First one is the Node.js. Second one is the Xcode if you want to work with the iOS uh, simulators. And uh, for the people who want to work with the Android Studio, sorry, uh, Android emulators, you can you have to install the Android Studio. But there is a catch in here for the Android things because you need to have some environmental variables set up, um, uh, like before launching or before you know, interacting with the Android uh, devices, Android emulators. So the, it is a simple thing. You have to open the Android Studio once you install it. You have to go to the file language and frameworks. And in the Android SDK, you have to download a few Android APIs. So API 34 or API 35, so that once the SDK is ready, or like, you know, the target SDK that you want to test it, uh, once the SDK is ready, you have to just uh, set the environment variables, uh, like Android Home, Android SDK root, so that it will provide few commands in the in the like you know in the Android like ADB commands, Android debug bridge, so that helps you to launch the emulator or like you know uh, capture the logs kind of thing. But for as for the to, uh, for the automation to get started with the web driver, uh, you need these basic things to set up so that the web driver can actually recognize things or APM can actually recognize things in the backend, or to launch the emulators and everything. So this is the basic setup you require, and nothing more. Nothing more. So um, th these are the prerequisites. These are the softwares that you need to install and make it ready in your machine. Um, and the second thing is the CLI CLI commands. So I'm going to use only two CLI things in here. One is the APM installer, 
and the second is the web driver type of CLI. So with this using two CLIs, I'll, I'll be uh, creating a repository for the mobile automation within seconds and I'll be also executing the test directly. So uh, one main thing is the uh, one main one main CLI is the APM installer in here. So why I'm using APM installer is APM installer can actually help you to check the configuration that uh, in your device so that if your device is ready for the mobile automation uh, for in iOS or in Android. Okay, so APM installer is a node package, it's an NPM, so that uh, you have to install through npm install hyphen g for global APM installer. So, and when you install this uh, package, you'll get the command APM installer. So, uh, you can see in this, uh, like you know, the uh, in Jiffy, uh, the image. Uh, so, that what happens is when you set the APM installer, it gives the set of instructions, so it gives it prompts for set of questions that you have to just select it and you have to, like, you know, uh, make sure. Uh, the configuration is ready. Not only the configuration, APM installer can also launch your emulators or simulators, or it can also uh, download your uh, plugins uh, in the backend, like XUA test or Android UI automator. It, it can do a lot of things. So it's a one plugin for entire configuration for your APM thing. Okay, so uh, this is the one great NPM package to make sure that your device is ready for the automation. Okay. And we'll, we'll see this APM installer in action too. And um, second command is the web driver IO command, the CLI command. So this is how you can set up a project easily. So web driver IO has again the CLI things uh, integrated. So it will ask for a sequence of questions or it prompts for you to uh, initialize the project setup and uh, giving the set of answers that uh, actually downloads the correct repository and correct packages to get started with the APM. and um, you might need to tweak a bit uh, configuration things based on your uh, simulator configuration like iPhone 15 or whatever the platform version it is, uh, iOS 17 or 18 kind of things. So giving that capabilities will actually start your test cases. So uh, we will have a simple demo actually in here. I have created a folder, empty folder, uh, just an APM conf. And uh, to make sure, I'm just checking that my node version is ready. Uh, so what I'm doing is first, uh, I'll check the APM installer that if I want to uh, check if my configuration is ready. So when I uh, type APM installer, which is already installed in my machine, it is asking for the sequence of questions in here. So I want to check uh, that I want to run APM doctor that actually checks the configuration for Android and iOS. So I want to check the configuration for iOS. I want to check if my iOS things are ready to run the test case. and also, if possible, I want to also check for the Android things. Okay, so all green in the sense, all the paths and environment variables are set in here and I'm ready to go. So the second thing is, I'll just keep that aside and I will just do npm init wt iwo and dot. So this is the command that we have seen in the uh, presentation. So this is how WebDriver Ivo allows a user to set up any kind of project, not only one thing, uh, like not on the APM thing, if, if it's a desktop app project or like, you know, uh, it's a cross browser test uh, project, uh, anything. So I'll just press few defaults, but uh, also I'll select few precise uh, options in here. So I'm selecting here end-to-end -end test case for web by mobile application. And I'm testing it in a local machine now. And at the end of the session, we'll also execute test in the Lambda test. And here, if you see, I'm selecting the mobile uh, option, not the web, to get the mobile framework in here. So here I'll be targeting for iOS as I'm on, on Mac. Um, and uh, I'll be using the test runner Mocha. It is also like, you know, the benefit from WebDriver Ivo that you can use many test runners for your APM uh, framework. So not only Mocha, Jasmine, Chai, Cucumber, what what are the framework you need? So this is how the WebDriver Ivo offering is done with the APM. So I want to use TypeScript um, here, not the JavaScript. And auto generate few files, yes. Uh, it will also generate few files in my uh, like in spec files, the test cases, I'll say yes. Uh, it will give the page objects also, I'll say yes. And it will give path for the page objects. And see, these are the like you know kind of reporters that you can use. So WebDriver Ivo again provides uh, many options in here. The whatever the reporter you want to use, so that so that the APM can also use these reports. So I'll just select the spec reporter in here, and I'll use the wait for as a default one. 
Uh, would you like to include visual testing? I'll say no for now. I don't want that for the demo purpose. Here, if you see, these are the services that you have to select properly when you're setting up a project. So as we are working with the APM service or we, as we are executing the APM test cases, I'm using the APM service in here. So these are the multiple services that actually uh, WebDriver provides and you can also work with multiple services at a time. Okay. So um, I have selected the APM service in here. I, I'm installing now. So you can see the default packages that WebDriver Ivo has selected. These are the default packages that are required to just run your test cases in here. Okay. So uh, again, APM service is the main thing that actually uh, manages your services in here uh, to start and stop. And do you want to continue set up using APM installer? APM installer is already installed in my machine. So I'm not, I'm saying no to it now. If you see in the project, I have a couple of files already in here. And I'll be opening the configuration file in here. And you can see in the configuration, it automatically generated. And um, in the capability session, you can see the browser name is Safari and the device name and everything. But according uh, in my machine, let me check. For example, I'll just again, sorry. Um, I'll just do the cancel. I launched the emulator using the APM installer. So for iOS simulators, I'll be launching iPhone 15, 17.5. So I have to give the same configuration in here. I'll be giving iPhone 15 and the platform is the 17.5 and done. So now I'm ready to execute my first test with APM in WebDriver I and it has taken only like a couple of minutes to easily set up. So what I need to do is simply, I need to look into the package.json, look into the command, the web driver IO and npm run wdio. Okay, so now what happens is automatically the test, uh, a, a web driver will start the APM service in the backend and it will like, you know, um, install things in the mobile, whatever the web driver agent runner and everything. And it will execute the test in Safari and it will give the report to you directly. It might take a while for the first time setup, but yeah, it, it should work. Okay, just give me a minute uh, so that like, you know, we will see the execution. <laughs> so meanwhile, we can also like, you know, play around with the capabilities in here. So uh, these are the capabilities file that WebDriver Evo creates for the APM2. So all you need to do is uh, in the capabilities session, you have to give your proper APM capabilities. So what are the capabilities you want to uh, like, you know, what are the device you want to test it? You have to just uh, provide this in, in here. And also APM can use other capabilities that are WebDriver IO specific that if you want to um, run test cases in parallel, uh, you can just include uh, multiple configurations in here. It can do, uh, you can provide the log levels in here that uh, it records the APM uh, uh, communication with the driver and devices and everything. Okay, oh, strange, just give me a minute. Sorry. It is launching. Yeah. I did some mistake in here before. So you can see um, it has executed a test in Safari. Maybe I can execute one more time for you. So. Uh, Okay, so this is how easily the setup we have done for the uh, iOS thing, and we have executed like you know, a web driver with APM, and we have already executed a test in here. So this is how simply it is uh, to configure and to set up the APM thing. Okay, so back to the thing in here. So uh, not only this web driver I also provides a lot of like you know. Uh, features that you can leverage to config, like you know, to manage your configuration or uh, to manage your test suits or to manage your uh, like, you know, cloud execution things. So um, I have a default project that I have been working on already. Uh, I'll be opening that project now and I'll be showing like um, the things in here. So this is the APM boilerplate. You can also get it from the GitHub uh, that uh, WebDriver Evo has actually. And it is the working project is up to like, you know, up to date. So if I open the configuration file, you can see uh, how the configuration files are managed. So for each environment or for each browser or for each device specific or uh, like, you know, for each cloud execution, uh, the configuration files are maintained uh, in here. So 
all it takes a base configuration or a shared configuration that will have the default configuration and you can also extend this configuration to configure your multiple devices in here so if i if you see in here i'm importing the shared configuration in here and also extending it to my ios specific and if i want to execute test in browser i'm using the shared configuration and uh, extending it for the browser if I want to like, you know, specific uh, execution Android browser, again, the same thing. So I'm just using the configuration, importing the existing configuration or the base configuration. I'm extending that configuration. So this is how you can actually maintain the configuration and the environment setup easily in the web driver IPO. So uh, it makes more uh, easily. So in here, what I'm doing is um, I've created a configuration for the Lambda test uh, to execute test cases in the cloud. Okay, so um, I've used the shared configuration. It is the base configuration in here, and I have, I'm executing one sample test in here. And if you see the capabilities, these are the only thing I need to change, and nothing else. Okay, uh, these are the Lambda test capabilities. If you want to execute uh, things in cloud, there will be different sort of capabilities based on the uh, which cloud you are using. So this is for the Lambda test. And if you want to, uh, as a, WebDriver IO and APM, it has to connect the Lambda test service, right? So we are using the services in here, Lambda test. Okay. So by using these services, actually my test directly runs in the Lambda test instead of running in the local. So this is how ease of setup is uh, WebDriver IO provides when you want to execute uh, things in devices or in the cloud and everything. Okay. So the job I have created for it is, I think, subbrowser.lt. So what I'm doing is I'll just copy it and I'll just run it. Maybe I can change the configuration a bit because it will be not duplicate. 13th step. Okay. And npm run healthy. So I meanwhile I also open my Lambda test dashboard. Um in the automation yeah you can you can already see in here it just started running a few seconds ago okay that in the set <coughs> so i'm not executing any uh test on the native app kind of thing because uh it takes a, a, a bit while like it's it takes a bit time to connect or like you know to upload app and to connect with the app so i'm executing a browser-based test in the lambda test in the mobile browser okay so here you can see clearly uh, my test actually opens a checkbox and uh, checks on the checkbox one and uh, like, you know, executes or verifies it. So this is how simple it is. If you want to execute test in the cloud. So this is how the web driver I will, uh, offers like, you know, APM or, uh, or APM leverage just web driver I will in the backend to run your test cases or to configure your test cases and everything. So and for the coming to the test management, uh, you can use any test runner like Mocha, Chai, Jasmine, you know, to write your test cases. And for the config configuration management, you can maintain any types of configuration files in here. You have to just uh, import the base config and modify the current config based on your needs. So there will be no duplicates uh, and also you'll have the precise configuration for the targeted devices. Okay. So coming to the WebDriver IO 9 features. So, um, Recently, WebDriver IO 9 has been released, and uh, the main thing with the WebDriver IO 9 is the uh, by default, WebDriver IO 9 uh, has WebDriver by die feature, and it starts the WebDriver by die services in the backend. Okay, so WebDriver by die is the new protocol, browser automation protocol, uh, which is the combination of WebDriver Classic uh, and Web, uh, CDP protocol, right? So if you are in the uh, already in the market, you, you have seen that bus. Uh, you, you will be listening to that bus already. <laughs> okay. Um, so by default, WebDriver IO actually starts the WebDriver by in the backend. So uh, externally, we don't we don't need to start that service. But if you want to use WebDriver Classic uh, instead of WebDriver by by default, you have to enable via enforce WebDriver Classic in here. This is the new capability that WebDriver IO nine has. So. What 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 like you know what it takes for the APM thing is APM is still implementing WebDriver by in the backend and when it is ready WebDriver automatically like you know communicates things with the WebDriver by with the APM and uh, not with the WebDriver Classic or WPC protocol and um, the browser support check uh, so like you know uh, we have also enabled a 
command called browser.get uh, is by right so that you can check actually if the by day is enabled by default for your current test configuration or not okay I, we have also enhanced the url command uh, in the web driver 9 it also works with the mobile if you see uh, Previously, we have we are only passing the URL in the browser.url, but you can also now pass in a JSON object like headers in here. And in the headers, you can also pass the author authorization token if you want to get authenticated. Uh, we, we have also passing like you know normal uh, authentication with the username and password credentials. So um, if you if your URL takes the username and password uh, as a parameter, so you can also send this with the, in the browser.url. And also you can also mock things in here uh, in the same browser.url so uh, before hitting the url you can also use hooks uh, on before load if you want to change the battery status or if you want to execute a script or if you want to load anything uh, you can do that uh, using the browser.url so this this feature is only uh, are available in the web driver 9 and um, viewport and device emulation, uh, this is one big thing actually, because uh, previously with the web driver I write, when you set the viewport, uh, the browser is used to like, you know, shrink uh, to that viewport, right? Uh, to that device or to that viewport. But in the web driver I have nine, we are actually resizing the window uh, correctly to that viewport. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have any graphical things, but if you can see, the, if you if you are able to execute the WebDriver 8 and WebDriver 9, uh, you can see the clear difference on how the viewport is set. And to be precise, all this view, all these commands are executed with WebDriver by die, and not with uh, WebDriver Classic. Okay, so WebDriver I leverages WebDriver by die in the backend to execute few things like locating elements, setting viewports, uh, device emulation, and uh, kind of things. Okay, so if you also want to emulate your browser to a particular device, you can just do it like in browser.emulate device and iPhone 15 the device name. Uh, it uses again still the bad eye feature in the backend. And you can also use the fake timers in WebDriver I 9. For example, if you want to test an application to a particular date, uh, 2021 assume, which is already uh, like, you know, if you want to go back and test to that particular time zone or time thing, uh, you can also uh, now use the fake timers in the web drive and uh, it allows you to do that. And snapshot testing of web components, this is also one big feature in the web drive. I now we can actually test the snapshot or uh, like, you know, verify the snapshot of a particular uh, element in here. So, um, this is how it is done. Uh, if you have, uh, if you want to like, you know, check the snapshot in the DOM, you have to just uh, use as you uh, uh, normally locate that element and get HTML and uh, exclude the elements in style. And you have, you can, now you can assert directly the snapshot in here. So this is one big feature uh, in the web driver nine. So another uh, take for APM users, uh, for the APM users who are using TypeScript. So Web Driver I 9 is migrated from TSNO to TSX. So that gives a boost in performance for the TypeScript users. And there are a few type safety things or the, that has been fixed so that uh, you'll be getting rid of few type warnings when you're using uh, Web Driver I 9. And uh, uh, it also uses uh, Web Driver I uh, 9 uses latest Node.js version. So, we are dropping support for Node.js uh, 16. So the default version of the uh, like in supported version is from the Node.js 18. So I always recommend to use LTS version uh, whenever you get started with any of the project with WebDriver I.O. And uh, PNP, PNPM migration. So um, uh, like, you know, for the Node.js who are aware of the NPM things, and yarn things uh, like you know npm is a bit slow uh, I can say uh, in downloading the dependencies. So we have migrated to the PNPM so that uh, it downloads the uh, like you know, node modules fastly and uh, it simplifies the project setup i can say and uh, like you now reducing the complexity in here pnpm actually downloads node modules a bit faster than npm so um what's next in the roadmap for webdriver io after the 9 release is uh, webdriver io has the by day feature already integrated and there are a lot more by day features that are being added day to day in the webdriver io and um because uh, currently web driver will use this by die feature to uh, locate elements, uh, set viewports and emulate, but in the future, uh, there will be more hands on inbuilt methods that will be only operated with the by die thing. So using the by die, you can also listen to log events, uh, like you know, mock network requests and everything. But, uh, web driver also does few things already, but with by die, uh, we can do it much better. Uh, so it gives more debugging capabilities to you. 
So this is all about the jump starting your uh, thing with the web driver uh, web driver IO and uh, so with web driver IO and APM things you can actually start uh, like you not know, testing your uh, APM things uh, easily. You can set up in in minutes and it uh, reducing the complexity on the setup and uh, you can directly execute your test cases with minor configuration changes. So uh, over to you, Ankit. So uh, here are the references, few references. So uh, if you want to have like, you know, go with the APM docs or WebDriver IO docs, uh, you can see I also included the link to the APM uh, boilerplate that WebDriver IO actually maintains. So you can download or clone that repository and you can get started easily. And um, if you want to go a detailed things of what WebDriver 9 has, we have a blog uh, that contains WebDriver 9 release things. You can check, check it out later. Okay, yeah, open to questions. Yeah, yeah. So, Rajan has one question. Uh, do emulator simulator can be deployed in CI/CD? I am unable to connect network for emulator in cloud environment. Is device farm or cloud device provider is the only solution? Okay, so uh, CI/CD in the sense you have to use the cloud execution environment again in here. So uh, if you have that environment or like an infrastructure ready, you can do it in the CI/CD. But if you don't have that infrastructure uh, kind of thing, you have to just rely on the uh, cloud-based executions like SAS, Labs, Project Stack, or Lambda Test. Okay. Uh, so people, if you have any questions, you can uh, type in the Q and A. We still have around, I think. It so is, someone asked like what is the specifications to your machine uh, so yeah. it is it is just a mac mac machine mac pro uh, with apple silicon chip that's it okay i think it was a really great session uh, i think i would like to give it one or two minutes if people have any questions you can type mm -hmm. and uh, do remember that uh, Harsha will be available for next 20 minutes at the hangout table and uh, yeah so we have a couple of questions coming in so Mohammed is asking why did we need to switch to web driver IO over APM 2.0 so uh, yeah, uh, WebDriver IO actually provides a lot of services, array of services in the back end. If you see the plugins, reporting tools, or the cloud-based executions, so it, it, all things can be integrated in terms of services and plugins. So if you want to switch to anything, or if you want to integrate any multiple configurations in one framework, you can use WebDriver IO. Okay, so here, I'm not saying that WebDriver IO uses APM, but in here, APM can actually use WebDriver IO services and WebDriver IO capabilities or WebDriver IO features in the backend. For example, uh, creating custom locators or like, you know, automating things or uh, handling like, you know, uh, cloud services, cloud execution things, detailed log reports and everything. So uh, I'm not recommending that you have to switch to WebDriver IO over APM 2.0, but if you are a TypeScript user or a JavaScript user and looking for the single framework that can handle both web and mobile, okay? Or if you have if your scenarios have both web and mobile uh, execution things, you can use WebDriver IO in here. Great. And the uh, next question is from Kijal. Uh, can we test both mobile apps, browsers, as well as desktop applications with WebDriver IO and APM? Yes, WebDriver IO has support to uh, test Windows desktop applications, but not with APM, I can say. Uh, like, you know, um, with WebDriver IO and APM, you can test mobile apps, native, hybrid, and uh, like, you know, you can test things in the browser, in the mobile browsers. For the desktop applications, uh, WebDriver IO uses a different service. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it for the question. So, uh, participant, do remember to rate the session at the end when you leave. And we have over 400 people from across the globe attending this conference. So, it's a great networking opportunity. So, you can just head over to Hangouts table and uh, do uh, hang out there and chat with the people. There is one more question and, I can see. Yeah, yeah. There is one more question just now with from Muhammad. Uh, is this best suited for React Native apps as the language becomes common TypeScript? I can say absolutely yes because WebDriver Revo has capability to identify React apps actually, like you know, to testing the React components or like you know, uh, to identifying the React elements. WebDriver Revo has inbuilt feature in that. 
So this is this is also one great advantage when you're uh, trying to use web driver or API for the React React apps. Uh, so okay. I don't see any more questions. I think this would be a good time to <clears throat> stop this session. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. Thank you.